as far as doctrinal disputes, I mean, the end time doctrine, let's, let's take a look at that again. Because there's so much doctrinal craziness about end time doctrine, if two people disagree on end time doctrine, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean they're a false believer. It doesn't mean they're a false teacher. It, it just means that they've been trained to believe it's going to happen a certain way, okay? All right? So let's see. One church teaches the rapture. Another church says we're going through the tribulation. Another church says we're already in the tribulation. I'm sure you've heard that before, right? That we're already in the tribulation? How many things have you heard about the end times? Too much. Too much stuff. It's, it's enough stuff to make you want to sit down and get an ass and get some glass of water. And go, hold on, let's just not talk about the end times. You know? Let's just leave it alone. I just believe in Jesus and he's coming back and leave me alone with everything else. Okay. However, there are certain things we do agree on. Let me uh, find out about metaphysics. Let's look that up. Because I want to give you a definite definition on that. Okay. Metaphysics. Metaphysics, the branch of philosophy that deals with the first principles of things, including abstract concepts such as being, knowing, substance, cause, identity, time, and space. There you go. That's metaphysics. That means all rules are off. Right? They're dealing with everything. That's what barely means. Is that what you got from that definition? I didn't understand it. Yeah, I know. It's out there. It's like anything that's out there, you don't need it. Anything that's too hard to understand, you don't need it. Word of God is easy to understand. If you know Jesus, word of God is easy to understand. You might hear a principle you've never heard before. You read a couple times. Okay, I get that. You know? But the basic principles is what? The Holy Spirit is our teacher. I'm not your teacher. Ain't no pastor your teacher. Any pastor that says, I'm your teacher and you're my students. What's wrong with you, pastor? You, you call me your student? <laughs> I ain't your student. You know, I'm a student to the Holy Spirit. He's my teacher. You know, every Christian, every Christian will tell you that the Holy Spirit is my teacher, right? Right? Does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when a pastor starts calling his congregation globally his students, you're my students. What is he saying? He's putting you in a subordinate position, right? He's basically saying, you ain't going to never get up here with me, but you're always going to be my students. Right? That's what we're saying, right? You know? Even, even in school, my college professors tell me that it's the Holy Spirit that teaches you. You know? They don't say we're the ones. All my professors in school say, it's the Holy Spirit that teaches you. They all say the same thing. Every class I take, they all say the Holy Spirit is your teacher. So how are you going to say, you're my students? Follow me. Don't listen to the other guys, because they're going to mess you up. But follow me. That's scary. That's kind of spooky, right? If a pastor says, you know, I'm the only one that's right. <laughs> the rest of those guys, they're wrong. You go down in that Christian church, they're going to mess you up. <laughs> as soon as they say that, something. or here's, here's the one I love. You got to ask God permission to join my church. Really? Hmm. So you're telling me that me believing in Jesus Christ as being our Savior and resurrected and died on the cross for our sins doesn't give me enough credentials to be in your little church? That's what he's saying. He's playing a mind game with you. Anytime a pastor says you got to ask God to join my church, he's playing a head game with you. That's all that is. See, the one thing about, about false prophets, they're all, at the end of the day, they become your Messiah. You understand know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, that, that, that teacher, he becomes the one that you trust and believe in because he's using brainwashing techniques that causes you to tune into his voice. You know, if he, if he keeps telling you stuff over and over again, like things like, uh, uh, I love all the churches, but if they don't teach what I teach, <laughs> you know, or if he starts making childish jokes about salvation, well, salvation, all the dudes, teach, all they do is teach salvation. Well, excuse me? Jesus said, teach salvation, right? Because you can't understand the Bible without salvation. If you're not saved, this Bible is not going to work for you. You're not going to get it. You might be able to memorize a lot of doctrines, but in reality, you don't really truly understand them. You're on automatic power. You're just like a robot repeating what a pastor said, you know. 
So a lot of times when I listen, I listen to lots of different pastors all the time. I listen to pastors from different denominations. I mean, I may not believe some of their doctrinal teachings, but when they get off that stuff and go on certain subjects, I can draw from them, you know. 